and gentlemen, and welcome inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tuxbury Memorial High School for tonight's MVC girls basketball matchup between the Borica Indians and the Tuxbury Redmen. If you're just joining us, I'm Andrew Del Piani here on Senior Night at the Romano as we have a battle of the NVC tribes about to get underway. A little bit of a different setup tonight as I will be on the floor for tonight's matchup. The PA system not working to exact, so going with the wired mic for tonight. These two teams met on Wednesday night in which Borica took a 58-50 win in overtime over the Redmen. As we get back to basketball here at the Romano for senior night. As before the game, you saw the recognition of seniors for each of the teams. Borica sitting at a 3-4 record this season, while the Tuxbury Redmen at 3-6, losing their last two games. Redmond won the opening tip and we'll have first possession here tonight as you see Alyssa Marcelletto back onto the floor for the Redmond. We haven't seen her since junior year and she's going to get a basket to get things started. Alyssa Marcelletto. And a great bucket there for Alyssa Marcelletto who had a torn ACL during her junior season and getting a layup in the first points of the night for the Tuxbury Redmond. And a great moment to see from the senior who's dealt with a battle of injuries throughout her high school career. And Barrick is gonna able to be answer at the other end. Sydney Sartell. So a give layup for each side to begin the night as now we're finally underway. And we're at even at two apiece off the buckets from Marcelletta and Sartell. Catanzano checking in. And a turnover for the Redmen. Out of bounds, Borica Ball. The Redmen trying to run a pick and roll early. Wasn't able to execute it there as went over the head of Mary Kay Callanan. They pass it up to Watford. Watford, heart of the net, and lays it in. Madison, Watford. Watford, who was named to NBC First Team All-Conference last year, giving the Indians their first lead of the night at 4-2. The Redmen will swing it around for Catanzano. For the senior captain, Lexi Palomino. 12 left on the shot clock for the Redmen. Mary Kay Callanan will go baseline. Rebound for Watford. They swing it around for number 14, Julia Trainer, in the corner. Sartell for three is good. Sydney Sartell for three. And Sartell with five of the Indian points to begin the night as Borica has a 7-2 lead a minute 30 into the first quarter of play. Gatanzano, Mary Kate Callanan, a three, is good. Mary Kate Callanan for three from Aaron McIntyre. And Mary Kate Callanan answers the three from Sydney Sartell. And it's back to a two point Indian lead. Look at the ball movement for the Indians. Sartell too long in the jumper. Watford, back to Sartell for the lay in. Sydney Sartell, a beautiful dish there from. Madison Watford to make that seven points for Sartell to begin the night. A 9-5 Borica lead. Balamino goes right at the defense and a foul on Watford. Borica fouls on number 21, Madison Watford, her first personal foul, first team foul. Lexi Palomino will be at the line with two shots. Palomino will head to the stripe after taking it hard of the rim against the big center inside, Madison Watford. And the first free throw is good from the senior captain of the Redmen. As the second unit will check in for the Redmen. 
544 remaining in the first quarter, a 9-6 Borica Indian lead in this NBC girls basketball matchup. Paula Menu hits both at the stripe. And it's a two-point Indian lead. Good to see some fans back here in the Romano for senior night as the senior parents of the Redmen back in here in the gym as that pass intercepted by Rachel Pitcher. Lavarnia pulls the trigger. And a rebound for number 14, Julia Trainer, who will push pace back the other way. Dropped it off out of the hands of Amos. Out of bounds, Redmond ball. As the Indians will get their first sub of the night, as Trainer will head to the bench. Number 35, Haley Cyrus, the freshman, checks in. A tough few last games for the Tuxbury Redmen, Redmen losing two straight. And the travel on Rachel Pitcher. Traveling violation, Borica Ball. A tough two stretch of games for the Redmen as they lost to Drake at Middies after dominating them in the first game of the home and home. Watford left alone, lays it in with the left. Madison, Watford. And Barica able to slice through the Redmen defense on each of their early possessions to begin the game. Have a four point lead. McDonald will take a dribble. Air balls a three. A rebound for number five, Haley Slaney. Pass goes the length of the court through number 11, Sartell. Watford, a three. A defensive board for pitcher. 4.35 remaining in the opening quarter. 11-7, Barica. Lavarnia will drive and will head to the line. Barica fouls on number five, Haley Slaney, her first personal foul, second team foul. Victoria Lavarnia will be at the line with two shots. Lavarnia doesn't get the roll on the first free throw. So Redmen will get the first unit back onto the floor. Lavarnia misses both of the line and it stays a four point Borica lead. 4.30 remaining in the first. Inside for Sartell and we'll send it back out to the top of the key. Pass tipped by Palomino, nearly stolen away by Stovesand. Watford stays with it, gets the offensive board over Stovesand. Madison, Watford, timeout, Borica. And it's been the Madison, Watford, and Sydney Sartell show here so far at the Romano. Borica with a 13 7 lead with 4.09 remaining in the first quarter of play. We'll be right back. Welcome back inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tuxbury Merrill High School. I'm Andrew Delpiana in this NBC girls basketball matchup, the Tuxbury Redmen trailing the Barreca Indians 13 to seven in this battle of the NBC tribes. Barreca sitting at three and four in the season while the Tuxbury Redmen at three and six. Good cut from Palomino, the reverse layup. Able to get the offensive board and lays it in. Lexi Palomino. And Palomino grabs her own miss. As Sartell moves back the other way. Good defensive stand there from Palomino. Is out of bounds. Out of bounds, Borica ball. Dribble handoff for Cyrus. Will go into the corner. McLeod double team by Palomino and Stovesand, and the Redmen force a turnover. getting a screen from her sister, drops it off for Stovesand, in the paint for two. Maddie Stovesand from Lexi Palomino. And a great find there from Lexi Palomino. And the Redmen force a turnover at the other end. Out of bounds, Redmen ball. And just like that, the Redmen able to make it a two point ball game. 3-10 remaining in the first quarter. The Indian lead down to two. 
as Christina Wentworth sees the court for the first time tonight. Redmond swinging around the perimeter, 12 to shoot. Palomino pulls the trigger. Board for Cyrus. Nice find inside from McLeod. Can't finish at the rim. And a foul on the Indians. Work of fouls on number 43, Kendall Jack Weiss. Her first personal foul, third team foul. Two thirty remaining in the first quarter. 13-11 Indian lead. Sam Ryan drives into traffic. Able to get it back. We got a tie up on the floor. Jump ball. The record takes possession. Looking to escape the Redmond full court press, and they do. Cross court pass will swing it around. Sartell in the corner. Air balls the three. Missed put back from McLeod. The good contest inside from the Redmond defense under two minutes left in the opening quarter. Mary Kate Callanan. It's good. Mary Kate Callanan from Aaron McIntyre. And the free throw line jumper from Mary Kate Callanan ties it back up at 13 apiece. As the Redmen have gone on a nice little run here in the first quarter. Down to 90 seconds left in the first. 15 left on the shot clock, too high for number 20, Brooke Green. Out of bounds, Redmond ball. Sartell will take a seat for the Indians. As Alyssa Forino checks in. McDonald off a screen. Bang! Cat McDonald for three from Mary Kate Callan. The Redmen take their first lead of the night at 16 13, a minute left in the first. As a three from Cat McDonald gives the Redmen the lead. As they were looking to kick it out. And a foul on Mary Kate Callanan. Redmond foul is the number 14, Mary Kate Callanan, her first personal foul, first team foul. And Mark Bradley frustrated after that call as he believed Mary Kate Cowden just earned possession by diving on the floor. And Cowden picks up her first foul of the night and the first team foul for the Redmen in this ball game. Watford, a nice move around Catanzano for two. Madison, Watford. And Watford plugged right back in to the floor, and it's a one-point Redmond lead. Eight-second difference between shot and game clock. 25 seconds left. Stove sand working baseline to McDonald. One more for Palomino. It's good! Lexi Palomino for three from Cassidy McDonald. And a big three from Lexi Palomino makes it a four-point Redmond lead as the Redmen bring in the trap. Tie up on the floor with 2.5 seconds left. Jump ball. Redmond keep possession. Go 
Excuse me on that call. That is Barica Ball. 2.5 seconds left in the first quarter. Barica looking to get one more shot off. And never mind, Julia Trainer just dribbles out the first quarter clock. And that's the end of the first quarter with the score that took Spare Edmund 19, the Baruka Indians 15. So that'll do it for the opening eight minutes here at the Romano. The Tuxbury Redmen with a 19 to 15 lead over the Borica Indians in this NBC girls basketball matchup. We'll be right back. Welcome back inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tuxbury Moral High School. I'm Andrew Del Piana. A four point Redmen lead. Is he able to get the lead back from the Borica Indians as we start the final eight minutes of the first half. And the Redmen who trailed by as much as six in that opening quarter. Able to flip the script, make it a two possession lead. 10 left to shoot for the Redmen. Five left. Stove stand a contested layup. Good defense there from Watford. It was a nice move from Brooke Green to get around Palomino. Inside Watford, too strong in the layup. Defensive board for Catanzano. And a travel on Catanzano. Traveling violation, Baruka Ball. And Sartell will return to the lineup. Trainer gets it back. Watford, the turnaround jumper is good. Madison, Watford, excuse me, not the turnaround jumper, the turnaround layup. Makes it a two point Redmond lead a minute into the second quarter. So San kicks it out. McDonald for three. That's a Redmond tie up Sartell. We got a jump ball. Jump ball. Baruka takes possession. Six forty-five remaining in the second quarter. Two points coming from Madison Watford to begin the quarter, and the Indians turn it over. Out of bounds, Redman ball. Palomino. There's a Redman swinging around to Katie Palomino. Pick and roll with Stolzan for three. Defensive board for number 10, Giovanna Amos. That's a nice move from Trainer to escape the trap. A three from the corner, no good. Redmond ball. Out of bounds, Redmond ball. As a three was no good in the corner from Brooke Green. We have 6-10 remaining in the second quarter. A 19-17 Redmond lead. Beats on the wing. McIntyre in the corner. It's good. Erin McIntyre for three from Riley Beats. The Indians moving quickly back the other way, blocked on the inside by McIntyre, but a foul call. Revan fouls the number four, Aaron McIntyre, her first personal foul, second team foul. Giovanna Amos will be at the line with two shots. Amos no good on the first free throw. Amos no good on both free throws. The offensive board for Watford dishes it off for two. Haley Slaney and Watford picks up the offensive board, dishes it off to Haley Slaney and a travel on McDonald. 
traveling violation for Rick Ball. 5.30 remaining in the second quarter. If you're just joining us, I'm Andrew Del Piana here for this NBC girls basketball matchup between the Barricka Indians and the Tewksbury Redmen. The Redmen up by three. Watford no good on the layup. A good defensive stand there from Mary Kate Callanan. Callanan at the top of the key. Beats with a nice fake. And we'll get it in the hands of Trainer. Trainer in the corner. Sartell. Foul on the Redmen. Redmen foul is on number four, Aaron McIntyre, his second personal foul. Third team foul. Three-point Redmond lead via a three in the corner from Aaron McIntyre. Well read on the pick and roll by Mary Kate Callanan, then forces a nice contest on Watford. Watford stays with it. And this time we'll head of the line. Redmond fouls on number 33, Riley Beats, her first personal foul. Fourth team foul. Madison Watford will be at the line with two shots. Watford no good on the first free throw. As the catalyst of the Barucca offense in her senior season. Last year picked up first team all conference in her junior campaign. Misses both free throws. The Indians stay with it. And two offensive boards from Slaney. Inside pass back for Slaney. Defensive board for Lexi Palomino. Pushing pace back the other way. Off the foot of Trainer. Kickball violation, Redmond ball. 420 remaining in the first half, a three-point Redmond lead here on senior night at the Romano. Some miscommunication there between Wentworth and Palomino, but Katie's able to stay with it. Wentworth for three. Deflects off the hands of Catanzano, defensive board for Slaney. Slaney looking inside as the pass missed the hands and went right through of Sartell. Redmond with numbers back the other way. Lexi Palomino for three. A tie up under the basket and a travel on Barica. Traveling violation, Barica ball, excuse me, Redmond ball. And it didn't seem like either side had clear possession on the rebound. The referee right on the baseline here making the call that it was a travel on the Indians. And the Redmen get possession off the turnover. Off of the hands of Wentworth, Barucka ball. Out of bounds, Barucka ball. Score remains 22-19 in favor of the Redmen. Watford inside, a nice move from McLeod, no good. Catanzano, Palomino for three. Offensive board for Catanzano, a fresh 30 for the Redmen. Palomino will try a two this time. The Indians pull down the board and a foul on Wentworth. Redmond fouls on number 25, Christina Wentworth, her first personal foul. Fifth team foul. 
And under three minutes left in the second quarter, remains a three-point Redmond lead. Trainer tightly guarded by Paul Amino. The Indians swing it around. McLeod, it's good. Sarah McLeod. McLeod gets it down to a one-point Redmond lead. 2.30 remaining in the first half. Double dribble on Catanzano. Double dribble violation for Rick Ball. Barica basketball, 2.24 remaining in the second quarter. Barica has twiddled this down to a one-point Redmond lead. Game two of the home and home between the two teams as Barica took game one on Wednesday night in overtime. It was number five, Haley Slaney took it to the hole. No one home for the Redmond, but wasn't able to finish. That one's gonna be last touch off a trainer. Out of bounds, Redman Bull. As the Indians will get Jack Keese and Cyrus back into the lineup as Watford and Trainer will head to the bench. Lavarni off a few screens, draws the foul. Baruka fouls on number 43, Kendall Jackies, her second personal foul, fourth team foul. Victoria Lavarno will be at the line with two shots. Lavarno 0 for 3 at the line tonight. It stays a one point Redmond lead. Lavarno misses. Bolt of the line on the offensive board for Mary Kate Callinan. Redmond will get the offense set up. Lavarnia will drive to the left, kicks it out. McIntyre, a contested layup. And a good rebound in some traffic by Slaney. And the Indians moving back the other way in transition. A nice Euro step there from Sartell. A three from McLeod is off. Rebound for Lavarnia. Wasn't able to get the pass off. And a foul on Sartell. Ulrika foul is on number 11, Cindy Sartell. Her first personal foul, 15 foul. As we have a, a side out. Over here, take it on the side. Here we go, 41. 41. 41. 1-10 remaining in the first half, a one-point Redmond lead. The Indians nearly force a turnover, but we got a jump ball in favor of the Redmond. Jump ball, the Redmond keep possession. at the top of the key. 15 to shoot for the Redmen. Callanan will take it hard. Defensive rebound for Jack Keese. Under 45 seconds left in the half. A 17 second difference between shot and game clock. seconds left for the Indians as the shot is blocked right in the middle there by Sam Ryan. The shot clock is dead. Lavarnia will take a three, an air ball. Barica basketball. Out of bounds, Barica ball. As Amos and Watford will return for the final 17.5 seconds left in the half. Amos, 
Off for Sartell to Watford. Look at the ball movement. Madison, Watford. A nice tic-tac-toe from the Indians. Give them the 23-22 lead down to three seconds left. Sam Ryan can't answer at the other end. And that'll do it for the first half of action. And that's the end of the first half of the score. The Borica Indians 23 and the Tuxpera Redmen 22. So the Borica Indians able to regain the lead and will take a one-point lead into the final 16 minutes of play here at the Romano on Senior Night. You're watching Girls Basketball on Tuxpera TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tuxpera Memorial High School. I'm Andrew Dalpiana. Second half about to get underway here on Senior Night between the Borica Indians and the Tuxpera Redmen. The Indians with a one-point lead to begin this third quarter of play. Barica basketball to start the final 16 minutes here in this second half. Trainer will slide it over for Sartell. Cross-court pass for Amos. Amos goes baseline. Foul from behind by Stovesan. Redmond fouls on number 34, Maddie Stovesan, her first personal foul, first team foul. Giovanna Amos will be at the line with two shots. Amos hits the first at the charity stripe. That's Amos in her senior campaign for the Indians, as there is six seniors on this year. This year's Billerica squad, and they have the opening two points of the third quarter and a three-point lead. McDonald in the corner. A nice defensive board from Sartell. Inside for Watford, what a find, but you can't finish. Gets the offensive board. And now the Redmen able to corral the rebound. As it was a beautiful pass from the perimeter to find Watford inside. And just couldn't finish the easy two. And a minute into the third quarter, the Barica lead at 25 to 22. 10 to shoot for the Redmen, Paul Amino got it up. It was a weird form shot and a foul on the Indians. Barica fouls on number 14, Julia Trainer, her first personal foul, first team foul. And that foul on Trainer will get a fresh 30 on the shot clock for the Redmen. Cassidy McDonald. Stolf stand at the top of the key. Will drive hard with the right. McDonald grabs the board. And Barucca able to come out of the pack with it with Sartell. Sartell goes right at the 11. Katie Palomino will stay with the Indians. Out of bounds, Barucca ball. There's some good hustle from Katie Palomino. Back on defense, able to force a good contest. Trainer left alone. Lexi Palomino grabs the defensive board. Larica sitting at three and four on the season while the Tuxbury Ribbon at three and six. As both teams battling for a playoff position in the NBC tournament. That'll happen next week. Gatanzano no good on the three. McDonald isn't able to stay with the board. Out of bounds, Barica ball. So two minutes into the third quarter, the second unit will get in for the Redmen of pitcher Kat McDonald, Riley Veets, Aaron McIntyre, and Mary Kate Callinan. Barica gets it over the timeline. Watford in the corner, trying to get through the defense as it stripped away. And a foul on Trainer, trying to steal it away from McDonald. Barica fouls on number 14, Julia Trainer, her second personal foul, second team foul. Yeah, 
as both teams looking to execute a full court press. I believe that tipped off the hands of Sartell, but Aaron McIntyre steals it right back. And some mutual frustration between the coaches on that last sequence. Pitcher short on the three from the corner. Trainer, one more pass, a three for Amos. Defensive board for pitcher. 5-10 remaining in the third quarter. Riley Vietz back for pitcher. McIntyre for three, bang! Aaron McIntyre for three from Rachel Pitcher. And some big threes in this ball game for Aaron McIntyre. Ties it up at 25 apiece. Deflects off the hands of Eats into the hands of Callan and the Redmen moving back the other way. McDonald, pass too high for McIntyre. Out of bounds for Ricka Ball. As the Indians will get some fresh legs into the ball game. Cyrus, nice Euro step through Kalanen. Wasn't able to finish in the paint. Turn around from McLeod is no good, but the Indians keep possession. Sartell a three. Rebound finds the hands of Pitcher, who has it stripped away by Cyrus. McLeod into the traffic. Good contest from Kalanen. Will stay with the Indians. Out of bounds, Barica ball. Redmen are holding their own here in the paint as they're not allowing many free baskets to the Indians tonight as that was the story of the night on Wednesday in which more than half of the Barica points came from inside the paint. Cyrus inside, the extra pass for Jack Heese is good. Kendall, Jack Heese. And the Barica ball movement looking really good. Palomino answers right back with a three. Lexi Palomino for three. Excuse me, two pointer for Lexi Palomino. So after the quick chat between the referees, they deem that a long two. But nevertheless, Palomino answers back and ties the ball game at 27. Good deflection off the hands of Catanzano. Catanzano now in the corner, trying to go baseline, and is pushed on the side. Barica fouls on number 35, Haley Cyrus, her first personal foul, third team foul. Three thirty-six remaining in the third quarter, tied at 27 apiece in this NBC girls basketball matchup. Wentworth, a moving two. The Indians moving back the other way off the defensive board. Cyrus spins off of Palomino, drops it off McLeod for three. Defensive board, a nice block for Stovesan. And we got a jump ball call. Jump ball. Baruka stays with possession. So a nice block from Matty Stovesan in the paint. Keeps it at a tie ball game. He's tried to throw it off one of the Redmen. Stolfsan stays with it. And a good defensive play there from the Redmen. Katie Palomino stops. Catanzano for three. Defensive board for Jack Heese. Cyrus will take the open space, but a good defense for Catanzano. Cyrus gets it right back. will stay with the Indians after the missed shot from Sartell. Out of bounds, Barica ball. 
Redman doing a good job of protecting the house right now. It's been a good collapse on defense and a lot of good help defense from the Redmen. As Barica hasn't re really been able to hit too many shots from behind the arc tonight. But with Watford back in the game, they're looking to change it. Pass intercepted by Paul Amino. The Redmen numbers back the other way. Cross-court pass. Palomino short on the three. Defensive board for McLeod. He turns it right back over to Catanzano. A block from behind by Watford. Out of bounds, Rudman ball. And Watford doing the same in the Barica paints. And Stovesan and Watford going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now here at the Romano. And Stovesan will get a seat along with the rest of the first unit of the Redmen. 2.04 remaining in the third quarter. Still tied at 27 apiece in this MVC girls basketball matchup in the battle of the MVC tribes. I've been looking to avenge the loss on Wednesday. Sam Ryan, straightaway three. Offensive board for McDonald gets it back to Ryan who will take it with the left and lays it in. Sam Ryan from Cat McDonald. And a good board from Cat McDonald earns a second possession in a lane for Sam Ryan, who steals it right back away. And then immediately calls for the travel. Traveling violation, the Rick ball. So a good play from Sam Ryan. Then took an extra step before making that dribble. Remen able to untie the game at 29-27. Warm Easter checking in for the first time tonight for the Indians. And head coach Chris Doniski will take a timeout for Barica. Timeout, Barica. A minute 19 remaining in the third quarter. The Redmen untie the ball game with a lay-in from Sam Ryan and have a 29-27 lead over the Barica Indians. We'll be right back on Tuxbury TV. Welcome back inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tuxbury Memorial High School. I'm Andrew Del Piano. A minute 19 left in the third quarter between the Borica Indians and the Tuxbury Redmen. The Redmen leading by two as Borica with the basketball out of the timeout. Nice inside pass for Slaney. An offensive board for Cat McDonald. As we get to the minute mark left in the third quarter. McIntyre's who had a strong night off the bench, in and out on the layup. Good defensive play from Sam Ryan, but Watford able to get possession back at the top of the key. Warmeister gets it back for Watford for three. Offensive board for Warmeister. Tight defense on this side of the court for the Redmen. As they try to take it through the paint, blocked by Callan and will stay with the Indians. Out of bounds, Barica ball. Twenty-one point eight seconds left in the third quarter. Fourteen seconds left in the shot clock. That's been a tough showing for either team here in this third quarter. Slaney has it stripped from behind. Out of bounds, Barica ball. As we started this third quarter with a 23-22 lead for the Indians. The Redmen outscoring Barica so far in this third quarter, seven to four. Callanan intercepts the pass. Shot clock is dead, 12 seconds left in the third for the Redmen. McDonald for three. Battle for the board, finds the hands of Ryan, puts it up. No good. And that'll do it for the third quarter. And that's the end of the third quarter of the score that took Spray Redmond 29, the Borica Indians 27. So a low scoring affair in that third quarter between the two MVC tribes. The Redmond will take a two point lead in the final eight minutes of play here on senior night at the Romano. We'll be right back.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tuxpera Memorial High School. I'm Andrew Del Piano. The final eight minutes of play about to get underway between the Tuxpera Redmen and the Bill Ricca Indians. The Redmen with a two point lead going into the fourth quarter as they outscored Bill Ricca seven to four in that third quarter. As it's tipped out of bounds, we'll stay with the Redmen. Out of bounds, Redmen ball, 19 seconds on the shot clock. Well, the shoot for the Redmen. Katie Palomino trying to spin off the defender. Cassidy McDonald for three. Rebound comes out to the corner, scooped up by Stovesand. Stovesand working baseline, hit the bottom of the backboard, and will find the hands of the Indians. Well read by Katie Palomino, intercepted back the other way. Up to Lexi Palomino. High off the backboard. Lexi Polomino from Katie Polomino. And a great example of defense leading into offense for the Redmen as the Polominos connect. And the high arching layup over Watford from Lexi Polomino results in two points. Watford, nice pass for Slaney, lays it in. Haley Slaney. And Madison Watford's passing display and scoring display on full display as it's back to a two-point Redmond lead. Stolzan able to get it back out to Lexi Palomino. 10 left on the shot clock for the Redmen. Stolzan will take a three. Barricka ball. Out of bounds, Barricka ball. Stolzan air balls the three on the offensive end. 6.22 remaining in the fourth quarter, a two-point Redmond lead. Inside, Watford fouled from behind. Redmond fouls on number 23, Victoria Catanzano, her first personal foul, second team foul. Madison Watford will be at the line with two shots. Good on the first free throw. And it's a one point Redmond lead as Watford looks to tie things up. A battle that went into overtime on Wednesday night. Another tight one here. Down to 6 12 left in the fourth quarter. Watford looking for a tie ball game. Hits both of the line, and we're even at 31 apiece. If you're just tuning in, I'm Andrew Del Piana, 6-10 remaining in the fourth quarter. A tie ball game at 31 apiece between Bill Ricca and Tewksbury in this NBC girls basketball matchup. Bill Ricca sitting at three and four on the season while the Redmen at three and six as the teams fight for playoff position in the NBC tournament next week. Nice pass inside as McIntyre couldn't finish the layup on the nice pass from Rachel Pitcher. Pull up jumper. Too strong, out of bounds. Out of bounds, Redmond ball. Redmond looking to regain the lead. As the Indians have tied it back up on the back of Madison Watford, who's been the leader of the Indian offense tonight and throughout the season. Pitcher couldn't control the pass from Vietz. Eight to shoot for the Redmen. McDonald slices through the defense, has it blocked, and will stay with the Redmen. Three on the shot clock. Out of bounds, Redmen ball. Three seconds on the shot clock. Redmen gonna need to get a quick shot off here. They try to go inside for Callan, and well defended by Sarah McLeod. Amos, a blocking foul on Callan. Redmond fouls on number 14, Mary Kate Callan, her second personal foul. 
13 foul. Giovanna Amos will be at the line with two shots. Amos regains the lead for the Indians. 32-31, 5-0-1 remaining in the fourth. Amos hits both at the line. A two-point Indian lead. Beats. Now for McIntyre, has it stripped away by Sartell. Pitcher trailing her from behind. Sartell lays it in. Sydney Sartell. And Sartell pickpockets Aaron McIntyre and gets a layup on the other end. And a foul on the Indians. Baruka foul on number 10, Giovanna Amos. Her first personal foul, fourth team foul. Four thirty-one remaining in the fourth quarter, a four-point Borica lead. Wentworth takes a three. Defensive board from a cloud. High pass over the head of Slaney out of bounds. Out of bounds, Redmond ball. Women find themselves down by four. As we're just getting to four minutes and change left in the final quarter. A nice pick and roll between the Redmen and one for Stovesan. Maddie Stovesan from Lexi Palomino. Barricka fouls on number 15, Sarah McLeod, her first personal foul. 15 foul. Maddie Stovesan will be at the line with one shot. Dolph Sand converts on the three-point play. A beautiful pick and roll executed to perfection by Paul Amino and Stolf Sand. McLeod. Defensive board for Stolf Sand. And a foul on the Indians. Barricka fouls on number 10, Giovanna Amos. Her second personal foul, 16 foul. And one more foul on the Indians will put the Redmen in a one and one bonus. There's a big three point play on the last possession by Stolfsand, makes it a one point game. Wentworth, call for the double dribble. Double dribble violation, Barricka ball. And a frustrating turnover there by Christina Wentworth. See it on the face of Mark Bradley after that possession. Slaney going hard. Inside for Watford, no one there for the Redmen. Madison, Watford. Timeout, Ulrika. And Madison Watford left alone on an island in the paint. Makes it a three-point Indian lead with 3.17 remaining in the fourth quarter. You're watching Girls Basketball on Tewksbury TV. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tewksbury Memorial High School. I'm Andrew Del Piana here for this NBC Girls Basketball matchup on senior night between the Barricka Indians and the Tewksbury Redmen. The Indians just called a timeout. They lead by three with 3.10 remaining in the fourth. The Redmen with the basketball. Well, the shoot for the Redmen. Dribble handoff for Palomino. She'll take a dribble. Looks like that three got deflected. Indians looking to extend the lead. Nice move on the inside as a land for two. Alyssa Fiorino. A five point Indian lead. 235 remaining in the fourth. Stovesan tripped in the paint. Yeah. 
Barinka foul on number 15, Sarah McLeod. Her second personal foul, team limit. The Redmen are now in the one-on-one -on -one bonus. Maddie Stosin will be at the line shooting the one-on-one. -on -one. Stovesand misses in the defensive board for Watford. Cross court pass for Sartell. Kicks it out. Fiorino will take it. Blocked by Stovesand. And Stovesand gets the ball in the hands of Katie Palomino. Two minutes left in the fourth. Redmond down by five. Mark Bradley will call a timeout. Timeout, Redmen. Under two minutes to play, the Redmen down by five. As Borica looking to bring out the brooms and sweep the Redmen. We'll be right back on Twixbury TV. A five point Borica lead, Borica lead with under two minutes left in the fourth quarter. If you're just joining us, I'm Andrew Del Piano here at the Romano Gymnasium at TMHS. Barica at three and four, while the Redmen at three and six. Stovesand at the top of the key. We'll take a long two, much needed. Maddie Stovesand. And a big bucket from Maddie Stovesand makes it a one possession game. And the Redmen steal it away, Lexi Polomino. We'll head to the line off the foul. Borica fouls on number 11, Sydney Sartell, her second personal foul, team limit. Lexi Palomino will be at the line with two shots. So a great read there from the senior captain, Lexi Palomino. Misses the first free throw. A minute 36 left in the fourth. One more free throw at the line for Palomino. Gets the back end at the line. It's a two point ball game. And the Redmen need to stop on defense. See here, Mark Bradley on the sidelines. Dig deep for this final 90 seconds of play. And a travel on the Indians. Traveling violation, Redmond ball. And a much needed stop from the Tewksbury Redmen, just like Mark Bradley was preaching. As the Redmen will get Julia Trainer back into the game. A minute 26 left on the clock. The Redmen down by two. And with that, Mark Bradley going to use a timeout. Timeout, Redmen. And we're going to stay with you here for the final minute 26. Redmen down by two. This NBC girls basketball matchup. The NBC came out with a tournament format that will take place here at the Romano for next week as we'll have two NBC tournaments. NBC one will be teams one through four in the conference standings while teams five through eight will compete in the NBC two tournament. So we'll get two different tournaments here at the Romano that we'll be calling games four. That'll be for both boys and girls so you're not missing any action of the NBC postseason tournaments. And both of these teams in the NBC two bracket at the moment as seating will be released tomorrow and on Sunday for each respective sport. As both teams exit out of the huddle, a minute 26 left in the final quarter. The Redmen down by two with the ball. On the floor for the Redmen, the Palominos, McIntyre, Mary Kate Callanan, and Stovesand. Stovesand gets it back, a long two, short. Defensive board for Sartell. Laney over McIntyre, goes bank. Haley Slaney, a four-point Barucka lead down on the final minute. Callanan straight away. 
And a rebound for Trainer. Has it tipped out of bounds. Out of bounds, Barucka ball. Redmond not out of this one yet, as we're down to 55 seconds left. A two possession game, though, is the key right now. Fifteen seconds left on the shot clock. Amos back at the top for Trainer. The Indians swing it around. Ten left on the shot clock. Slaney, the layup. Defensive board for Stovesan and fouled. Well, Rick, a foul is on number five, Haley Slaney, your second personal foul, team limit. Maddie Stosan will be at the line with a one-on-one. -on -one. And a tough rebound there from number 34, Maddie Stovesan, in the traffic of the Barica playoffs, excuse me, in the traffic of the Barica players. 28.8 seconds left, Stovesan hits the first, earns herself a second. Mark Bradley gonna use a timeout. Timeout, Redmond. 28.8 seconds left in the fourth. We'll be right back on Tewksbury TV. Stovesan with one more at the line. Hello and welcome back inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tewksbury Memorial High School. I'm Andrew Del Piana. 28.8 seconds left in the final quarter of play. A three-point Borica lead. Maddie Stovesan at the line for her second free throw. Trying to cut it down to a two-point ball game. Stovesan misses. And the Redmen tie it up, but it's Borica basketball. Jump ball, Borica takes possession. So that play might have been on purpose by Mark Bradley. And the foul automatically on Mary Kate Callanan. Redmond fouls number 14, Mary Kate Callanan, her third personal foul, fourth team foul. As the Redmond will now play the foul game. And the tough thing is, it's, it was only their fourth personal foul. As Watford fouled once again. Redmond foul. Redmond foul is on number. Redmond foul is on number 14, Mary Kate Callan, in her fourth personal foul. Fifth team foul. So, fourth personal on Mary Kate Callan, and then Palomino will immediately foul. Redmond foul on number three, Lexi Palomino, her first personal foul, sixth team foul. Timeout, Borica. So the Redmen in the middle of a foul game, 22.6 seconds left in the final quarter of play. They trail by three. We'll be right back. Welcome back inside the Romano Gymnasium at Tewksbury Memorial High School. We got a barn burner here on senior night, 22.6 seconds left in the fourth. A three-point Borica lead with the ball. The Redmen sitting at 16 fouls. One more will put Borica in the bonus. And Stovesan does just that. Redmond fouls on number 34, Maddie Stovesan. Her second personal foul, team limit. Barica is now in the one-on-one -on -one bonus. Madison Watford will be at the line with the one-on-one. -on -one. So the Redmond able to get Barica in a free throw shooting. As not much time taken off the clock, 20.9 seconds left. Watford hits the first free throw and makes it a two possession game. Watford hits both at the line. A five point Barica lead, down to 18 seconds left. Redmond gotta go quick. Ten seconds left for the Redmond. Callanan takes it in. Barica basketball. Out of bounds, Barica ball. And the Redmond eating a lot of time off of that possession, not getting anything out of it. 7.7 .7 seconds left, down by five. They need a miracle. And 
and Mark Bradley telling his team not to foul. And that'll do it here tonight. And that's the end of the ball game, the final score, the Borrega Indians 43 and the Tewksbury Redmen 38. So that'll do it from the Romano Gymnasium here tonight. The Borrega Indians sweep the Tewksbury Redmen with a 43-38 road win and move to four and four on the season. Well, the Tewksbury Redmen now lose their third straight and move to three and seven. Again, playoff seedings will come out during the weekend. And I will update from my Twitter as soon as I can. I get that information. But for our entire crew at Tewksbury TV, I'm Andrew Del Piana signing off from the Romano Gymnasium. Thank you for listening tonight. Good night.